Good morning, church. Carol Farrell just walked up the aisle and told me something that, uh, that not a lot of pastors have to hear on Sunday mornings, or at least not, not a lot of urban pastors. She said, the police are here rounding up the cows. The cows got through the fence this morning. So these, are, these are Granberry problems, right? Good morning, church. We are, we're glad you're here. Friends, we are, we are surrounded uh, even now by, by constant reminders of just how broken our world is. Uh, we know that the challenges with COVID persist, that people continue to wrestle with that. Uh, yesterday was a reminder, this is the, the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and we're aware that that's a, a reminder of just how much hate and, and brokenness and division persists in our world. So we come full of that knowledge, and still we come. We come to this place. This place and this time remind us that God is still working. Amen? That God is still working, that God's power, God's ability to heal is greater than the world's brokenness. And so we come to, to commit ourselves to live into that truth together, friends. And so we're glad that you're here, uh, whether you're here in person, uh, in this room, or, or worshiping with us online. We're so grateful that you've set aside this time uh, to enter into the presence of God and, and to glorify and praise our God this morning. Well, just a couple things to uh, let you know about before we continue in worship. Uh, first of all, our flowers this morning were given by the Williams Hunt family uh, in, uh, in memory, in loving memory of Linda Williams. So we thank God for Linda's life, and uh, we, thank the, we thank the Williams Hunt family for that gift of flowers. Uh, we have flu shots today. Anybody that wants to get your flu shot, you can do that right here. Many of you signed up for that. I think we also, they'll take walk-ins too, so you can go over to the gym if you'd like to after this service and get your flu shot taken care of right here. Uh, after this service, we also have, Pastor Amy, wayfinding, right? What is wayfinding? We got it. We got it. Everybody got that right Wait. there. When you pass the cows. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> Come join Pastor Amy and our, our wayfinding team in Amy's office right after this service for that. Uh, moo. We have, we have uh, on the coming soon table right outside of the sanctuary, there are at least four things that I know of that you can sign up for. Okay. Uh, first, CPR training next week. We still have a few spots in that. Uh, second, we need youth meals, right, Pastor Austin, for the month of October. If you'd be willing to provide uh, a meal for a group of youth on a Wednesday evening in October, sign up for that. If you have questions, talk to Pastor Austin. Um, the senior event, we have a senior adult ministry event coming up in October. They're going to Fort Worth to the Stockyards, the John Wayne Museum. Should be a great time. Sign up to be a part of that. And then finally, Bible studies, our small group Bible study sessions kick off this week. Okay, we have five groups meeting at different times and places throughout the week. Two of the groups are full, but we still have three groups that have spots available. So you can sign up for one of those right out there in the narthex after worship. I think that's everything, except to say that with those Bible studies, if you are planning to participate, uh, we did send out and publish uh, at FCCGranberry.live a preview video with lots of background information about the Gospel of Matthew. So if you, if you intend to be part of that study, uh, either in small group or on your own at home, please do check that out. I think that's plenty enough in the way of announcements. Amen? Amen. So with, with all that being said, let us be present to one another, to the Spirit in our midst. Would you stand as you are able, in body or spirit, as we welcome the light of Christ and let us worship together.
church just for a moment. We're going to sit in that word of praise, that declaration of faith, and that reality that is upon us, not just, not just today, but every day, in every moment, in every situation, in every scenario, that the God of the universe, the God of all wonders, the God of mystery, the God of all, the God of holiness, is here. He is there wherever we are. Every moment, every day, in every time. And whether you're here in this space or you're in another space, the Spirit is the same. Our God is the same. The declaration is the same and the reality of worship today is the same. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. God, because you are holy, through Christ you have made us holy. And that is why we come. Amen, church? If you're at home or traveling or driving, you have to say amen to that. Because that is our agreement today. You are holy and you have made us holy. And so we declare as God's holy people, Lord God Almighty, we praise you for who you are and we praise you for what you have done. You are the healer, 
bring healing to this place. You are our righteousness. Bring transformation to this place. You are the provider. Increase through your spirit today our trust in you. You are the God who is with us. Let us enter into your presence more fully known today. You are the Lord of hosts. Bring victory to our struggles. You are the God of peace. Bring comfort to our chaos. We don't have additions to our prayer list, church. Oh, but we have a lot of prayer requests that have entered into this moment and into this place. And for all those who need, for all those who are in distress, for all of those who bring questions or discomforts or doubts or fears, we say to the God who can handle all things, help ease the burden in our spirit today and bring rest through your spirit. We pray this and we declare this through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all the church said, amen, amen. We're glad you're here, church. You can remain standing if you want. You can sit down if you want. It's up to you. It's up to you. This is your space. This is our time together. Feel free to worship as you want. Uh, as we get ready for the word, uh, as we prepare our minds for a for a word about nurture and what was the second part of it? Empowerment. I like that. Uh, that is that is the space that we are in. It's the community that we are living inside of. And so, as we prepare our minds and our spirits for uh, Pastor Justin's word today. Uh, as we think through nurture and empowerment, uh, we're mindful in these next two songs of, of those things specifically. And so uh, worship with us. Uh, let your spirit be, be moved. Feel God in this space as he continues to descend this morning. And let's just continue to give him our praise. Let the king of my heart be the man and where I run the fountain I drink from he is my song and let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life he is my song cause you are good Good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh. Rise up in you this morning, church. Let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. He is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire. right here, this section right here is the good news of the gospel for the people of FCC today. You're never gonna let 
words You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Where we proclaim your name. This is a house of healing. hearts are full of faith. You have our full attention. You have the final say. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Stand with us, church. Let's, let's worship together this last little bit. There's resurrection power. Your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over. Even the coldest grave. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're speaking. God, I believe you're working. All things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe you're working. All things for good. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. We 
we sing come alive in the name of jesus come alive in the name of jesus this is a house of miracles we bring everything to the feet of jesus everything in the name of jesus this is a house of miracles are you ready for the word this morning church Pastor Justin, come break open the word for us. Speak to us this morning. And hopefully we all believe this is a house of miracles. They still happen. And the church said, amen, be seated. Amen, amen. Thank you, praise team. Y'all are trying to wear me out before I even get started today. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for your ministry and for your passion. Well, church, this is, uh, this is week four of our Life Together study, right? We're looking for, uh, for, for key principles here for how we do life, how we, how we share life together as a family of faith. We talked in week one about listening, right? The importance of that. Uh, week two, we talked about authenticity, being genuine, being real with one another. Uh, last week, Pastor Amy talked about the power of, of prayer to kind of help us come back to center when we, when we lose our way, right? When things get off track. And today, I'd like to talk a little bit about nurture and empowerment, how we encourage each other as church family in purpose and in faith. And to do that, I'd like to take a look at a, a reading from the book of Hebrews. Go ahead and take your Bibles out there. Uh, in your pew, or you can follow along on the screen. Those of you at home, you can do the same. Take your Bible out. It's good to use these things. Uh, the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, by the way, a book that many scholars say is, is probably the most eloquent of all the New Testament books, uh, the, the greatest literary masterpiece that we have in the New Testament. So we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 10 today. And I'll read verses 19 through 25. Hebrews 10, 19 through 25. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God, and together we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I, I told the, uh, the, the staff that, that I'd be preaching this text this week, and I had to miss the, uh, the staff meeting on Tuesday for another meeting, and, and they told me afterward, Carly told me, she said, you know, we, we took a look at this text together, and we realized we had absolutely no idea what on earth you were going to do with this text. So let's just kind of live into this together. Now what we have, what we have going on here in this passage is, uh, is, is something that may not be obvious, but it's, it's kind of a three-part creed. So we open up there verses 19 through 21, talking about the gift of, of Christ, the gift of the Spirit, and then we have this, this three-part credo here, that, that again, may not be obvious, but it's there if you look. And, and I think once you, once you notice this, you'll recognize how familiar it feels. So verse 22, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Okay, verse 23, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope. Faith, hope, can you guess? Can you guess what's coming next? Right? Faith, hope. Verse 24, and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. Faith, hope, 
and love. This is a, it's a, it's a good three-part creed that really could have been our theme for this entire Life Together series, right? Uh, the author is saying, hey, we, we've, got, we've got Christ, we've got the Spirit, and so as we share life together as a people of faith, let us live into faith, hope, and love. We, we could have chosen that kind of as the guiding principle for our entire series. We didn't, but we could have. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these, of course, is love. Amen. And that's the one I want to talk about today. I want to focus here on verse 24. Let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Okay. What do you, what do, you do? What do you do if you want to help your, your neighbor here at First Christian Church, if you want to be supportive of your friends, of, of the people here in your faith community, what do you do? Well, there's a pastoral role to that, sure. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 26, if one member suffers, all suffer together with it, right? Uh, we, we are called to support each other in compassion when times are hard. That's a big part of what we do together as church. But I think what we see here in verse 24, is this message. If you really want to help somebody, if you really want to help your neighbor, help them find purpose. Help them learn how to love others. Right? Okay, and what is, what is purpose in the deepest sense? What is purpose in the Christian sense? Oh, funny you ask. That happens to be what I'm writing my book about right now. Appreciate the question. Not that I'm the, the end-all be-all on this, but it is a, a passion, a, a topic of passion for me. Uh, purpose. What is purpose at the deepest level? Purpose is not about the, the job that you have or, or had, okay? Purpose is not primarily about uh, that, that one thing you're supposed to do with your life, right? That one accomplishment that you're supposed to make. Purpose is more basic and more broad than that. Purpose is what happens when we use the gifts that God gives us to address needs and brokenness in our world so that, so that the purposes of God might come to fulfillment, might come to fruition in God's time, okay? Purpose is what happens anytime you do that, anytime you use those gifts that God gives you to build a better world in the image of Jesus. That's purpose. And you can do that in your job, of course, but you can also do that in your family life. You can do that in your volunteer life. You can do that here through us as we reach out to this community. You don't have to be 18 or 21 to do that, and you can't retire from that. Amen? Okay, God calls us. If we have breath, God calls us to live with purpose. Ephesians, I want to read a little, a little brief passage here from Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. Ephesians say, The gifts that he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. To what? Verse 12, Equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. That's, that's what purpose is about, okay? That's what we're trying to do together as church, regardless of where we are, you know, are we at work, are we at home, are we at church, regardless of how old we might be. Every believer is called to live with purpose. And part of our purpose as church, okay, part, part of what we're called to do when we share life together is help each other figure that out. Help each other find and activate Christian purpose in our lives. No. No, that's not what the text says. It doesn't say help each other. What does it say? It says provoke it's stronger than that. Provoke each other. The Greek word is paroxysmos. Paroxysmos. 
and it literally means pester, Deshay. It means nag. The author is calling us to nag each other into purpose, into, into the acts of love, purpose to which we're called. Paroxysmos. If you sense that one of your siblings is maybe kind of missing the purpose boat just a little bit, maybe you're called to be just a little bit of a nag. Hmm? Okay. Fred Craddock, one of the, the great preachers and pastors and scholars of our movement, talking about the book of Hebrews, says that there was probably uh, among these Hebrew communities to which this letter was originally written, there, there maybe was a sort of an apathy that was, that was beginning to set in. Okay, maybe, maybe there were leadership issues in the church, right? Uh, maybe, maybe there was frustration over the delay of the parousia, the second coming of Christ. People thought Jesus would be back by now, and he wasn't, and people are getting frustrated and kind of, you know, fed up. Maybe, maybe there was this sense that, you know, community life, church, wasn't really all that important to the building of a personal faith. Okay, and because of all of these things, there's this, there's this apathy that's setting in. Sounds like every church ever, right? We all wrestle with these things. We all get impatient and frustrated. And maybe when that happens, there's this tendency to want to say, ah, forget about it. You know, this tendency to kind of be apathetic. And the text says, no, no. We cannot neglect the community life. We can't give up on each other. We can't give up on encouraging one another in love to these acts of service, to, to being and building the church that God desires in this world. We have, to, we have to pester each other just a little bit, perhaps, in love to the acts of love to which we're called, right? Now, at, at this point, at this point in my message this week, I was thinking, all right, I need to, uh, I need to highlight somebody. I need to, I need to pick on somebody, because we, we got a lot of people in our church who are good about encouraging one another in acts of love. Who should, I, who should I pick on? Well, I thought it was only fair to pick on our moderator and vice moderator. Sorry, Brian, it's, this, is the, this is the weight of the mantle of leadership, okay? Part of what makes Brian and Sally so great for the roles of moderator and vice moderator, president, vice president of the congregation here, is that they are, they are relentless about reminding us to come back to center in terms of our mission, our vision, our core values, right? I don't know how many times I've heard Brian say, how does this fit with our core values? We, we want to we send a check. Why, why do we want to send that check? Just to make ourselves feel good, right? How is that going to foster relationship? How is that going to foster dignity in our world, in Christ? How is that going to foster discipleship? How is it going to grow us in humility? Maybe, maybe we're just doing something to, to feel good about ourselves. How does it fit with our core values? Sally... How many times has Sally Timmons, since our vision study in 2011, said something like, we have to get outside the building, right? We can't become an insular church. We got to keep getting out there and serving. And they say these things so often that sometimes, Brian, it makes me just want to say, I know, I know. But they're right. They're right. And we have to be reminded because because we may know, we may know these things intellectually, okay? But do we, do we know, do we know them in our hearts? How often do we forget as we get into the, the rhythm and the rigmarole of, of daily life? How often do we forget about that important call to come back to center? I'm not calling you a nag, <laughs> Brian. Brian's my boss, so I'm not going to call him a nag. But, but. It is important to be reminded, OK? 
okay, of the importance of these acts of love, of knowing purpose together as individuals and as church. Now, I want you to know that we are, we are working here with intentionality on, on ways to help you, to help new people that come through the door get connected, uh, find your place, find your, your ministry, find your purpose, okay? That, that's, what, that's what wayfinding is all about, right? 10 o'clock today, if you're looking for ways to serve, ways to, 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 to get involved in these acts of love, to claim your purpose, that's what we're all about at 10 o'clock today, Pastor Amy's office. Having said that, I also want to say this. We have 530-something people on our roster, okay? And in order for every person involved in this congregation to know purpose, we're going to have to do more than just have programs that come from leadership. Wayfinding is great, but at the end of the day, the purpose of this community, the purpose of each of you as individuals and all of us together as faith family is not going to happen because of any programs that the leadership team puts in place. You are going to have to take responsibility for your purpose, and you're going to have to take responsibility for one another in purpose, okay? This is me, this is me being a nag. This is me pestering you, okay? I'm gonna change my name to Pester Justin. How about that? I should, thank you. We, we, could've, we could've called this, instead of nurture and empowerment, Pastor and Pester, right? We're called to both of those things. You're going to have to take responsibility for yourselves and for one another when it comes to living with purpose. There is this thing. There's this thing that happens, church, and I, I'm grateful for the chance to talk about this honestly today, okay? Uh, it may happen for all the right reasons, but it happens and it makes me sad. It has probably happened in every church over the past 2,000 years. Know that as I say this, I do not have the image of you as an individual in my mind, okay? If you feel convicted by this, great, but I'm not just thinking about you, okay? Here's this thing that happens. People come to church, and, and they, they want to be humble and kind, and they don't want to impose. They don't want to assume. And so they say, if somebody, if somebody, if the church wants me to serve in some way, they will ask me. I will wait to be asked to serve and to live in purpose here. And then maybe time passes. Maybe nobody asks you to do anything. Maybe you start to feel a little bitter about that. Maybe they don't really value me here. Maybe they don't appreciate my gifts. Maybe over time, you might even become a little passive-aggressive about that. Hmm? Maybe somebody does ask you, and it's like, oh, now. Now, now you're going to ask me. Hmm. No. <laughs> and meanwhile, on the other side of this, what's happening? You have people in leadership saying, you know, I, I'd like to ask her to serve in that way, but I don't, I don't know that she really wants to be called to serve right now. I don't get the sense from her that she wants to serve. I don't want to impose. I don't want to assume maybe I shouldn't ask her. Or, or maybe you don't get asked to serve because the leadership teams of this church consist of people who are imperfect and who make mistakes and who may fail to, to recognize your gifts as clearly as we should, okay? We can't let this happen, church. We need you, we need your gifts, we need your acts of love, your purpose, your service, and so I need you to take responsibility for that. Put yourself out there, okay? It is not, uh, it is not out of line to be bold about the gifts that God gives you. We don't wanna be passive about that. Come talk to Pastor, come to Wayfinding, come talk to me, tell us what you wanna do. Tell us how you feel called to serve. Hold yourself accountable for living with purpose in the image and in the way of Jesus Christ, okay? And I know, by the way, 
I know that as we age, uh, as we face health issues, that what we can do changes, but whether we can do never changes. Again, friends, as long as you have breath, as long as you have breath, you are called to serve with purpose for the building of a better world in the image of God. When we are lying on our deathbed in our final days, as long as we have breath, we are called to serve with purpose. And we can, we can serve with purpose even then. Why? Because we can pray. We can pray. Amen? Amen. We have to take responsibility for ourselves. And we have to take responsibility for one another, too. Okay? And I, you don't have to be mean to do that. It's not what we're talking about. I'm not talking about, you, you aren't doing anything around here. Shame on you. That's not what it's about. How about this? How about, you know, I've noticed that you're really good at such and such. It seems to me that you have a gift for such and such. Did you know that, that we have this, this new outreach ministry doing this? Have you thought about doing this? Encouraging, pestering each other in love to the work of purpose. I had a classmate in seminary who started seminary, I think she was 74 when she started seminary. And she said that her pastor had been pestering her since she was 70, that she needed to go to seminary. He said, you need to go to seminary. And she said, you need to keep your mouth shut. I am 70 years old. What are you talking about? I'm not going to seminary. But he kept pestering and pestering and pestering. He perceived those, those gifts and graces for ministry in her. And finally, at 74, she said, okay, okay, I'll go. And she did. And she graduated at 78. And she got a church job. She served for about two or three years on a church staff. Which means that she was in seminary longer than she served in that job before her health uh, declined to the point that she couldn't do that. How much does that matter? That she only served for two or three years after being in seminary for four I'll tell you how much it matters. It matters not at all. It matters not a lick. Because in the economy of the Spirit, purpose is not measured in years. It is not measured in dollars. It is not even measured in how many lives you touch. You put yourself out there. You take those gifts that God gives you. You put them out there in faith and in love. And you trust that your God is a loaves and fishes God, a God who takes all of that up and works for good, right? A, a, a God who, who takes all of that and, and magnifies and multiplies for the building of the world that God wants. And so, and so, we do what we can with what we have. That's purpose. You do what you can with what you have for the building of the kingdom. And when we find that we aren't doing that because maybe we're feeling a little bit apathetic, right? When we feel like we aren't doing that because, uh, we, you know, maybe our time has passed. We're too old for that. We, we, we find that we're not doing that because maybe it, it doesn't feel like we're doing all that much in the grand scheme of things when we're feeling that way, when maybe we're being less purposeful than we should, we thank God that we have church. We thank God that we have church. And so we covenant together to pester each other. To pester each other in love. To the work of love. Be a nag. Be a loving nag to the building of a better world in the image of Christ and to the glory of God.
let us consider how to pester one another to love and good deeds. I did a lot of pestering as a kid. I'm not sure a lot of it for love and good deeds. Not neglecting to meet together. The habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Not neglecting to meet together. Not forgetting about this, this table, where we come and we recognize something that is in common that we hold with each other. We come here, and I think this table is our anchor. That, that within all of the pestering, whether it is to love and good deeds or otherwise, that we come here and we say, this is what it's about. We are together here. Here we are anchored in the spirit with each other. But I think it's also our sail as it sets us forward, pushing us beyond what we thought maybe is possible just alone, and maybe that person next to you that is nagging you or that is pestering you is that wind that you needed to go into your week and to show love or good works or good deeds, to show God to somebody else in this community. And so we come to this table in the midst of pestering, and we recognize that we are grounded here and that we are called to go forward from here. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took a common loaf of bread. He broke it and gave thanks, saying, this, this is my body, and it is for you. Do this and remember me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is something new we are doing here. Every time you drink of it, remember me. For every time you eat this bread, and every time you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. Hear the prayer of our elders. As we come to this holy table, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable, O Lord. The table before us represents the total commitment of your Son, Jesus Christ, the commitment to empty himself for us. As we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we receive your great and healing works. Help these moments of community with you and our fellow believers to give us guidance and strength that we may live as your people. Help us to remember that this is the moment to love. Amen. Amen. All are welcome at the table. Come and be fed. the 
dawn of resurrection floods the night as hope prevails to shine salvation wakes our chains to break and we in glory to reveal the fullness of his reign our hearts will bow before the sound of Jesus name oh the cross of Jesus Christ So church, I'm here to provoke you in love. I didn't look it up, but I'm just going to guess that the root of that word, pro, as in positive, voke, as in voice, call, a positive call from God that is persistent and will not leave you alone. It's probably been either whispering or kind of calling from the side most of your life. And there are so many ways to hear it. We can hear it through beautiful music. We can hear it in a sunset. We can hear it in a baby's cry. We can hear it in the eyes of a stranger that breaks our hearts. This call to love and serve and use who we are, what we have, to help other people 
come alive in Christ. And the miracle of it all is that it helps us come alive in Christ. Uh, we're going to try something new today. We're going to invite anyone who would like prayer, anyone who is being provoked in their hearts to uh, open themselves to what God is doing, to come. We'll have uh, Pastor Justin and one of our elders, Amy Dwight, available on either side here. If you'd like prayer and that you just feel maybe that God is calling you toward something new, because I guarantee you that's, that's what the Spirit does. Um, or if for the first time today you would like to join in covenant with us, uh, this church is a beautiful place, an imperfect, beautiful place to love and serve alongside each other. Either way, the invitation is always new to us, provoking us in love. Will you come as together we stand and sing How Great Is Our God? How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see How great How great is our God How great is our God
declarations we can make. Uh, it's one of the first ones that we come across in, in Scripture, and we declare that today. We declare that as, as community. We declare that as God's people. We declare that in our faith, and we declare that in the vision for, for the week that is ahead. Because not only is our God great, our God has great things in store. And sometimes, Pester Justin, God pesters us too in our spirit. And so my prayer for all of us today is that the God of all greatness show us the opportunities that lie ahead this week so that we can see them, so that we can walk into them, so that we can truly be the hands and the feet of Jesus that he has called us to be. You've got an offering opportunity as you exit. You've got that up front and in the back as well. You've got Bible classes for all ages that are happening right now. We've got fellowship time out in our, in our gathering area. So let's just continue to worship and be together in community this morning. We're glad you're here. Thank you for joining us online. Be great. Be blessed, church. And we will see you next week. How great is our God. Amen. Amen. Sure.